Me Too Fighting Series fans, this is your co-main event of the evening. This amateur middleweight fight is set for three five-minute rounds. First, fighting out of the blue corner. His record stands at two wins and two losses. His height, six feet, two inches, and his weight, 185 pounds. He trains with Rue Jitsu and fights out of Searcy, Arkansas. This is Rudy the Reborn McLaughlin. And his opponent fighting out of the one more gym red corner. His professional record stands at zero wins and one loss. His height, five feet, 11 inches, and his weight, 186 pounds. He trains with Demolition Fight Team and fights out of Baltimore City, Maryland. This is Dylan, the mindless Hulk Vodka. I want a good, clean fight. You heard the rules in the back room. Listen, listen to my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch glove. Come out fighting. There we go. Nobody's here to see the referee. I'm sorry. Come on, man. <laughs> Let these guys fight. They need their 15 minutes. Come on. Right. Rudy's looking pumped up over there yeah. in the blue corner. Yeah. You know, sometimes that has that effect. It makes you go, okay, now, now, now this is real. Heavy leg kick right away from Budka. Well, Rudy was expecting that from Bucca. He told us yesterday he knows Bucca has heavy leg kicks. You can tell how big and strong Bucca is. It's physically very strong. I mean, this is a guy that, for my money, beat our heavyweight champion, Dylan Bucca. I'm fighting he at 85. Wow. And Cam Kisnick's 6'8, right. 265 pounds. But Bucca looks good at 185. Yeah, man. he does. Yeah, it looks, looks very powerful. Yeah. Budka told us yesterday he was thinking of even going down to welterweight at some point. He said, no, nah, this weight cut was yeah, what he changed said. my mind on that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I don't understand. The smaller you get, like the, the more athletic and right. the fighters are. They can do everything. Yes. And they're not hitting as hard, but, man, they can do everything well. It's tougher. I don't know why people want to keep going down. They're faster. They hit more punches. For, it just, it's, it's crazy. Look for Rudy right here to get that underhook on that left side and jack it up and try to reverse buck or get off the, the cage panel. Well, that's definitely what he needs he, to do. You got yeah. that overhook. It's hard to get control exactly. right there. Underhook's where it's at. And these are some devastating body shots right now. A lot of people think Buck, Dylan Buck is just a wrestler, man. He's got some good boxing as well. Inside boxing, that is he's showing right here. Absolutely. Well, every time we see Demolition Fight Team, they've got good hands, man. Oh, that good that knee. Was, that was, oh. That knee was almost low, but it, it was it was at the abdomen. That was a good job right there. He's trying to get this underhook. He's got to be careful by doing that, putting himself in a weird position right there. And look, man, Budka will sit here and do this for 15 straight minutes. He doesn't care. He's well, winning the fight. Exactly. Well, a lot of people, you know, they hate on him for that. They're right. like, you know, Dylan Buck is a boring fighter. He just sits there and lays and prays. But whatever he can, he's, he's a winner. He's a winner. He wins. If you he don't, wins fights. If so. you don't like it, stop it. Exactly. That, that is my opinion. And Rudy's doing a good job. He's about to get wide base right there. Yeah, good job. Oh, nice elbow by Rudy. And this is what Rudy told us. He said, I'm going to fight like hell to get off my back. He's trying to get up now. He, Rudy told us this is the position that's going to break either his will or his opponent. Exactly. He did say that. He goes, listen, it, it, one of us is going to break. Either he's not going to be able to hold me down and he's going to break mentally or I'm going to break because I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love a realist right here who understands hey, the score. You know what I mean? Understands exactly what's going on. And you gotta wonder how much energy Budkin's using right now to keep this man held down the entire time. I mean, it's, it's a constant battle the entire time. Budkin working on the neck of Rudy McLaughlin here. Is he in? No, a, he's not. No, nah, but he didn't have an in was, under, but he was cranking the head in a weird way. Imagine Dylan Budka submits Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt Rudy McLaughlin. Hey, you've seen that stuff happen right. before. It's crazy when it does, but. 
McLaughlin reversing position and Budka right away, not wasting any time. But McLaughlin's up. Rudy's up. That's what he wanted to do. Going McLaughlin reaching Kimura. Good elbow on the inside. Good advice being thrown out right now by the corner of Bucket. They're just trying to get him to wear his opponent down, stay in position the entire time. Yeah, man, I'm always impressed with Gary Young's corner, and Buck is listening to everything his coach Gary Young's telling him, too. But see, I will say this, as a ref, right, if they're not doing anything and he's just holding him up, now that was a nice shot there, separate them. You do have to start thinking about separating You really do. Uh, I, well, it's just, you know, if they're being active, if they're working for position, or if they're landing punches, you let it go, and if they're not, then you break it up. Definitely a judgment call, but it appears that McLaughlin's the I mean the one throwing the strikes. Yeah. I mean well, this is what Buck is gonna do. He's gonna sit there and let you know Rudy carry his weight. But I think Rudy's just resting, man. He's not exerting any energy well, I, or I, anything I like that. I think he's thinking, man, if I just sit here and fight, fight you know, go power for power, I'm gonna wear myself out. I'm just gonna wait for my opportunities and take them. And so, like you're saying, if nothing's going on, the referee might want to look like, hey, maybe I need to break these guys up and create some action. That's what Bucket does, man. He'll lull you to sleep like that and then change levels real quick to get, to get the takedown. But Rudy, Rudy was ready for it. Yeah, very good. You know, a lot of fast twitch, muscle fibers right there. Very explosive. Man, we talk about this every week, Chris, is I don't understand this overhook in this situation right here, man. Humble underneath. The underhooks will win you the, the fight from right here. I think it's just easier right it now is. is what it is. See, he dug for the underhook right there, but it's definitely easier. So I think he's not wanting to fight that battle. But this is what Dylan Bucket does, man. This is his game. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, we, we, we try not to bang on the rest too much. But I, I would like to see him, you know, start to talk to him at least. Hey, man, you at least have to be active here. You at least have to warn them. There was no warning at not all. He didn't None. even think about it. And I'd be surprised if, if we really see anything from him in this fight. But with that being said, Dylan Butka, I mean, very clearly won that round. He did just by control. But, I mean, really, man, if I'm Rudy, I'm, I'm feeling good about myself going into the second round. Right. I got taken down. I popped right back up. Well, not right back, but he got back up. He took minimum damage. So I would be feeling good in the second round, but I would like to see what he said he was going to do, establish a jab, use his angles, and try to keep this fight standing. Agree. You said he felt good, but it's all about adjustments right now. How can he adjust? You can't continue to get pushed against the cage like that. You're going to have to start fighting back, doing some angles, corner turns, pushing your opponent back against the fence, make him pay every time he comes to try and close that gap. Well, here's the thing, too, Lytle, is we've never seen Dylan Bucca be pressured. Right. Why won't you try to pressure him? He's always pressuring everybody else. I would like to see how he reacts if Rudy pressures him. Big there right hand. Yeah. And, and and he's doing what Dylan Butka does best. And now Butka on the back of Rudy McLaughlin. No hooks just yet. Is McLaughlin hurt, I wonder? That right hand looks like it snuck through. Oh, that's a face well, crank. And that's just a painful move right there. It's probably not going to submit you, but it is going to suck for a while. There's where you talked about. He's doing exactly what his corner is telling him in his butt kids. Corner, you, you can hear him yelling over here. It's almost like he's playing a video game. He's hitting the A button, and boom, right hand comes. And look, Lido, he's sitting in that half guard. You talk about that all the time, sitting right there in that oh, half guard. Oh, it's Budka on the oh, guillotine that's, here. That's the I guillotine. thought it was tapping there. But he didn't. McLaughlin uh, concedes the position. I th it, it, that felt it like Budka could have finished that. Yeah. That was tight. Yeah. For Bucca to, to tap out a black belt, that would be something else. Right now, just kind of being heavy. It's what you talked about. He cannot stay in the guard, and he's not in the guard right there. He's it's in a dominant guard. position right now. Dominant. Right. That's a half guard is a great position to be in in MMA. Not so much in jujitsu, but this is a jujitsu. Well, you talk about it all the time. You love that that position there, that half oh. guard to stay in that half guard. You made a lot of money in your career from that spot. <laughs> didn't you, Chris? That's a very good spot to be in. Not like I said, jujitsu. Not so. Hold much on. Delivery. What we got here? Armbar attempt by Rudy. Budka's out for now, but Rudy's yeah. still working to improve. And this is 
Rudy told us, I'm going to fight like hell to get up off my back. At the moment, he is not. Now he's working up for a single leg. Good. But the pressure of Bucket, quarter Nelson right here. Well, that's where Bucket did that strength right there, just overpowering his opponent. Yeah. I would, I mean, I wonder what Dylan bench press is. I mean, any, but he's technically sound. He does not much room for error. Well, man, even when he was fighting heavyweight, fighting the big guys like Cam, you you never saw him being overpowered, ever. He oh, never he was overpowered. Head, head, arm, arm, head and arm choke here. That's a tough For one. Dylan Budka. That's going to be hard for him and to finish with go. the cage pin on, yeah. on that side, too. So, But you know what? Well, side mount right now, very down at spot. Oh, good job good by Rudy. Very nice. Suck the hips Get out. Get his own yep. takedown. Now Yay. McLaughlin takes down Dylan Budka. Good job by Rudy. Taking the D1 wrestler down and Dylan Butka. Can Butka get off his back? Looks like Kamora sweep attempt here for oh, Butka. A great job by Rudy. He's reaching around back. and grabbing his opponent's arm, making it very difficult to do anything. This is Rudy McLaughlin's time to shine right now. His biggest moment in the fight so far. He's got Butka in a, uh, in a bad spot. Look, he got that arm trapped. His, his right hand is being trapped right now. Butka's is. Making it very difficult. Oh, he was able to he get out. out. And oh, he's gonna go. I thought he was gonna go for that Khabib lock in the leg move. Was Rudy? He did not. But he's still in a dominant position right now. Oh, Buck is. In, Buck is gonna look to stand up. McLaughlin's wrestling. Buck on his. Is Buck fading? His. I mean, is is his cardio fading? And we look, talked about that. Looked like he is getting a little bit tired right now. Look, his mouth his, is wide open. In his pro debut, man, when he fought that undefeated guy, he looked great round, the first round and a half, and then yeah. he started fading. And he's done that the last couple of times we've seen him. Well, you guys, you know, the more muscle you have, the more oxygen it takes, which is the one reason I try never to get any muscle. Same, my same. Body. That's <laughs> same. But, man, I, I just would have never thought that I would see Bud could get held down. I mean, again, it's only been a, a couple minutes now, but I just would not have anticipated seeing Bud could be held down by Rudy McLaughlin. Well, it's definitely happening right now. I mean, <laughs> he's tried to explode up a couple of times, and Rudy did a good job of keeping him, keeping Bud caught on the ground, and so he just got to continue to do that, wear his opponent down, and really look to dominate the third round. I mean, look, even in the first round, when they were in the clinch the whole round, I think Bucka won because of oh, yeah. control, but Rudy was more, the more aggressor and threw more look, strikes in the first round. Rudy's looking at his crowd, shaking his head, smiling. <laughs> he's having a great time in there, man. First Let's fight in over back. five years, right. by the way, for Rudy McLaughlin. And Butka right now needs to explode and get up and hope that maybe salvage, you know, possibly of, of, of winning this round or not losing. I, I don't know. Butka back on his feet. Kick misses right there. McLaughlin out of range. Short time remaining in the round. This could be anybody's round. I tell you, man, I don't see a lot of ring rust in Rudy. No. Looking good. Ooh, that was a nice right hand by Dylan Bucca at the end of the bell there. Very right close around. second round. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know how you would score that. Man, well, yeah. it, it, it's weird because a lot of times it seems like the judges remember who was on top last for a long period of time. And he was on top for a long time, but was it enough? Hard to tell. Well, for my money, Rudy McLaughlin was the more active of the two fighters while on top. Um, it feels like, you know, they probably split time, half half the guys, half the round. Yeah, but it's usually the guy who's on top, the second half right. is what the yeah, judges that's, remember. So, yep. I don't know, very tough round to call right there. And you know what, going, I agree with you, and going through that, I'm going to say it's 1-1 one, one going into the third. Uh, I would I would say so as well. But if you're Rudy McLaughlin, I, you almost have to think that it's, that you're down 0-2, just to be safe. You know, I do love it. We talk about it all the time. Next week in Kansas, you guys are going to have the live scoring, so you're going to know in between yep. each, after each round who's winning. I love it. I cannot see why we don't do it in every state. I'm pushing for it. It just hasn't happened yet. But it makes so much more sense to be like having a basketball game where at the end of it, you're like, dude, we went. No, he lost by three. Well, I had no idea. You don't know what the score is going into the last round. It might be 2-0 to zero or it might be 1-1. One to one. It'd be good to know. Yeah, there's just, no, I mean, if you think about it, there's just no reason to not have the live scoring. Besides tradition, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's crazy. I, I want to know this. Every fighter you ever talk to wants to know the score. Oh, Ooh. big knee right there for Rudy McLaughlin and Dylan Buck. Now, now, Andy, your, your, what, your keys to victory could not be more important right now in this last round. It's whoever's going to be able to do what you said is going to win this fight. I agree. I agree. 
And now Budka secures the takedown. Did secure the takedown, however. I do like the fact that you know, Rudy is putting his back's against the fence right now. He's not laying flat on his back. He's not giving it up totally. He's saying, I'm going to try and work to get back to my feet. But here's the thing. The first two rounds when he was taken down, the first round, he, he got up really quick. The second round, he kind of lulled there, right? He kind of he kind of got complacent there for a second. He wasn't taking any damage, but he can't do this in the third round. It's like you said, Alex. He has to believe that he's 0-2 going into the third round. You've got to go for broke. You've got to get up. He's got to get up. He's got to start walking up. And Dylan's just more than happy right now to stay in this position and try and win a decision right now. I think he didn't like the way that second round ended. Oh, strong elbows landing for Dylan Budka. Framing on the head is Dylan Budka. McLaughlin trying to work underneath. That's the really high level jujitsu stuff that I feel does not work very well in MMA. I mean, it works great if you have a gi, if you can move somebody, but when a guy flies his hips out and starts throwing elbows, it doesn't work. You start figuring real quick, it's not a good move. Right. Dylan's just looking to hold Rudy here for the, the remainder of the third round. Head and he's arm choke again. He head is. arm choke right there. I don't think he's going to be able to get and, the head and arm. And Rudy thumbs up the ref and says, I'm good. Well, he's definitely not going to get that head and arm with his legs to the other side over exactly. here, the left side in that, in half guard. You have to get totally on the, on the same right side, side right. if you want to get that move to work. I don't even know if he's really trying to submit him. Right. I think he's just yeah. trying to hold position for a minute, make him carry his weight and win, get some points in the judges. But if, if Rudy doesn't do something here quick, he's just going to give this round away. I know it's hard to do, but he's going to have to find the right time, explode up, e explosive movement to either get up or try and reverse positions to get on top. We're now halfway through the third and final round. Rudy McLaughlin has been on bottom for over half of this round now. And Buck is just riding him, man. You know, he's just everywhere he goes, he's following uh, Rudy's hips. Rudy's going to stand up here. Trying to peel the hands of Bucka. If I'm Rudy, I'm doing whatever I can right now to flip you this gotta guy you got to go off. for broke, man. He's, he's got to go. He, can, he cannot get taken down again if he wants to win this fight. Trying to explode out, get the wrist away. We got a let's go yellow from the crowd. Good knee by Bucca to the body. And that might be all she wrote right there. It's yeah. going to take a, almost like a Hail Mary move at this point. Right. 90 seconds remaining. I mean, you're, you're probably not going to win the decision unless you stand up and knock your opponent down or something. Even if you get the takedown, it's, he's just controlled the majority of this round from this position. Well, and the thing, too, man, I mean, being out for five years and coming in and, and fighting a guy like Dylan Buck, who it's hard. was amateur fighter of the year in 2021 in the country, I mean, to, to come in and do something like that. And look, he, he has some some good moments in this fight. Absolutely. You know, at the end of the second round, you thought the momentum had just swung his way. Yeah. Right. And really, man, I'm going to have to go back. I think Buck's cardio is looking okay in the yeah. third round. You know? I, I, you know, I stand by what I said. In the second round, it looked as it if did. he was fading. It looked that way. But, you, hey, know. you know what? He might have just been saying, hey, I'm, I'm not going to win this part. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to. Right. Gear up for the third round. Why waste energy for something that's just going to waste the rest of my energy? I'm not doing that. And you can see the look of frustration right now. Rudy McLaughlin, he's just upset for the fact that he cannot get away from this Budka right now. He can't get away. I mean, he's still continuing to try to get up. You got to give him that. I mean, Buck is just relentless, man. He just, he's like a magnet. He just stays on you. A lot of blood on the back of the leg there of Dylan Budka. And that does it. And we finally see a judge's scorecard. And blood on the head of Budka as well. Budka must have got opened up with that, uh, that elbow, that short yeah. elbow Rudy threw in the second round. Right, see he's here good. to replay some ground and pound from Budka up top. He landed some good elbows. I think those are going to come next on the replay. No. That's McLaughlin. 
going underneath. There's an elbow. That might have been the one that cut him. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Right there towards That's the That's exactly end. the one that did. Yeah. I think we'll see Rudy back in the B2 cage, and I, and I feel like Buck is going to get his first professional victory, man. I would have to agree, yes. I don't think that this should be a long time for these judges' scorecards to come in. Almost certainly two rounds to one would be how I would score it, but I'm not a judge, you know? I'm just a dude who talks on the microphone. But, man, Dylan Budka probably walking down here one and one, and, and just the sky's the limit for that dude, man. He's able to come in and impose as well. You know, like you talked about, you got to give Rudy McLaughlin a lot of props for having not been fought in five years, coming and taking a very tough, very big, strong right. opponent. And he didn't look bad at all. He, he just really couldn't get his offense going because of the, the strength of Butka. Yeah, Butka's going to be a problem at 185, Yeah, man. man. Yeah. I mean, the strength advantage, he's a big kid. And the thing about Bucket is he lives his life right, man. He lives for this. He lives in the gym. I mean, literally, he lives in the gym. So. Right. <laughs> Hell of a performance here. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be a problem at that middleweight weight class, as you said, Andy. Again, this is a guy who, in my opinion, should have been our B2 Fighting Series heavyweight champion as an amateur. Right. Uh, competed for that belt. In my opinion, won the fight. I agree it's with crazy. that. crazy. Down, down to... 185 pounds as a professional. Well, before Lance gets in here, I was going to say one thing. We talked about Rudy taking the fight, but what about Bucca taking the fight on a week notice? Yep. Jaden Talker, his teammate, was supposed to fight Rudy. Something happened medically, I don't know exactly. But he knew that Rudy was 2-2. Two and two. He knew Rudy was a black belt in jiu-jitsu, and he didn't care. He was ready to go. No, you're, you're never going to scare the mindless Hulk, of course. He's, and he says, oh. I always show up. How can you not love the Mindless Hulk? Man, what a great fight here. I mean, again, if you don't like it, beat it. We, yeah, I mean. If you don't like it, beat it. Can't beat yeah. it. I mean, it's, it's tough to beat. The I only mean, reason he lost his pro debut because he gassed out. He was winning the whole fight against a very top prospect undefeated fighter. So I mean, Dylan Buck has got a, he's got a bright future ahead of him, man, and I hope he sticks with B2. Man, it's just a very tough style when you're fighting against it, when the guy's just on you the entire time from the beginning to end, wearing you down. It's so tiring, you know. People don't understand how tired you get from just trying to defend yourself. You can't get your offense going because they're smothering you the entire time. It's very frustrating. It's mentally exhausting. Well, I this, mean, this is taking an eternity. I mean, fun. usually when it takes this long, it's crazy, it's, it, man. It's a damn split decision, but this is definitely not a split decision. No, hey, not hey, at all. Never, all right, we hey, finally got Lance right. in there. New there commission. B2 Fighting Series fans, at the end of three rounds, this decision has gone to your judges. Judge Julia, uh, Julian Childress scores this 29-28. Reese Allen, 30-27. Freddie Griswold, 30-28. For your winner by unanimous decision, Dylan Bodka! So the Mindless Hulk picks up his first professional victory. Rudy McLaughlin drops his comeback fight, his first fight in over five years. Rudy's going to be a tough two and three for his next opponent. I, I tell you that right now. Hey guys, backstage at B2 Fighting Series 150. This is our co-main event winner, the Mindless Hulk, Dylan Budka. Dylan, how do you feel getting some redemption in the cage tonight and your first professional victory? I feel good. I feel like a champion. And I wouldn't want the first one to be anywhere but B2. You took this fight on a week's notice. How do you train for something like this? Uh, I always work by if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Uh, I have a lot of my fights have been short notice because everybody that backs out. And uh, the hardest part was just making the weight quick enough, and uh, I did it. I fought in four different weight classes in the past year and a half, and I've never had a complaint, no matter who it was or what the weight was. I always show up, and I do what I got to do. You know, this was your first fight, middleweight fight, and fighting at 185. How did it feel? It felt good. It felt good. The weight cut got to me a little bit because it was the first time. I had to cut 25 pounds in a week and a half, and I did it, and I got the job done against a really good opponent. Are you going to stay very active this year? Oh, yeah, we're looking to fight once a month. No matter who it is, whatever weight cuts, I'll make it. 
All right, man, you did so much in that cage tonight, so I'm going to let you go sit down. Thank we you so are much. very proud you of you. For, oh, it's a pleasure. Thank Without you, you we wouldn't have a job. Stay mindless, everybody. Thank you.